All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Philosophy of Fitness podcast, episode number 45. My name is Haley. I'm going to be your host today and every single day that you are tuning in. If you're watching over on YouTube, I have switched the background now to the blue lighting. It's going to be switching up every now and then. I just figured that blue kind of went with my shirt today, went with my vibe, my aesthetic that I was feeling. So if you haven't already, if you're listening to this on a streaming service, know that I film every single episode now over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Haley Noel. Come watch, come join, grab a snack. We're going to be diving into it today. So today I kind of wanted to sit down and talk about reprogramming our subconscious mind and how we can really attack that because the subconscious mind is really what's running the show. And this is something that's absolutely changed my life and it takes time. It's super powerful. And yeah, I kind of wanted to just really dive into this today and, and share my experience with it all. So if you are interested in listening and learning how to reprogram your subconscious mind, how to bolster up a stronger sense of self-worth and confidence from within yourself, then you know what to do, my friends. Go ahead and stay tuned. All right. So my motivation for this kind of came about intuitively. I was just thinking about topics, you know, that I wanted to share on this podcast. And I'm still trying to kind of figure out where exactly it is that I want to go because I'm equally passionate about all things fitness related, nutrition, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm also really passionate about this spiritual stuff, the stuff that goes on within our minds and our souls and our spirit and those kinds of transformative things that might not be quite so tangible with our five senses. So today is one of those days that I really want to dive into the more spiritual side of things. And that is deprogramming our subconscious mind. So something I guess really just a good starting point with this would be to explain what your subconscious mind is. So in our lives, we have our conscious mind, which is our our thoughts and our feelings that we're aware of. You know, if I say to myself right now, uh, oh, gee, I'm thirsty. Let me grab a sip of my water. That is a conscious thought that I'm having. I know that I am thinking about that. But your subconscious thoughts are almost like the things that are running in the background. It's like if your computer were to be doing a software update and there's all these things going on in the background and we don't know exactly what they are, but we know that they're happening. So a lot of people say, you know, your dreams at night are kind of like your your subconscious mind is, you know, filtering through all of the thoughts that it's had during the day. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that your subconscious mind is what is really dictating your reality. It's those unconscious beliefs that you have about yourself, those deeply ingrained subconscious narratives that you continuously repeat day in, day out that are actually creating the reality that's existing around you. So a lot of what this is, is a story that you are telling yourself. And it's a story that you're telling yourself that you may not even be aware that you are telling yourself. And it often begins... You know, through childhood, it begins at an early age. And I think that sometimes our subconscious narrative has a lot to do with ancestral healing that we need to deal with. And that's an entirely other topic, you know, healing um, ancestral trauma. But essentially, you know, growing up, if you were somebody that was always told that you weren't going to amount to anything, if you were somebody that was told that you were no good at X, Y, Z, Uh, that you could only get to this certain level, right? Like, let's say that you had really strict parents and they wanted you to follow the same career path. Let's say that your parents also wanted you to be a school teacher, for example. And they told you, well, you can be a teacher, but you can't even try to go for anything else. Or, Or, you know, even if you had a peer or somebody else around you that just told you that you somehow weren't worthy or you somehow weren't capable or, or weren't enough, That is a seed that is planted into your subconscious mind and that becomes a part of your story. So all of a sudden you have this person's frame now becoming a part of your frame. And this can go both ways too. You know, this isn't just for the negative side of things. This can also be for the positive side of things. If you had super encouraging parents that told you that you could do anything you put your mind to, that the sky was your limit, the world was your oyster, then that's going to become a part of your story as well. And it's all of these little things that add up. You know, I like to think of it as like a a memory card or something that you're carrying with you and all of this data is being 
filed into it and stored and you're just over time sifting through it and you continue to store it. So basically what happens is if we've been told, you know, all of our life that that we are not enough, that we aren't worthy, that we don't measure up, maybe Maybe for some of you, if, if you were bullied as a kid, that can be a part of the subconscious mind. I was bullied terribly throughout my middle school years, and it gave me incredible low self-esteem. It put me in a dark place, so that became a part of my frame. I started to adapt those ideals, even though I didn't really know it, and that started to dictate the experience around me. And what happens is we slowly, we slowly accumulate these over time. And we hold on to them and we carry them. And the longer that we hold on to them and the longer that we carry them and the more that we are hearing it, the more that we ingrain it in our subconscious mind, the more it is going to dictate the reality that we experience. So if you're someone, again, that's been told that you're never going to amount to anything, you start to believe that. If your teachers are telling you that maybe you were a problem child in school, you were, you know, a bad kid in class or whatever it might have been, and you just had everyone around you down on you all the time and that it seemed like you could never do enough, that that you really felt like you weren't worthy or you weren't enough, that builds up over time. And then what's going to happen is since that's in your subconscious, everything around you is going to start to reflect that narrative back to you. Because what happens is that we are, we are immortal spiritual beings living a temporary human experience. And I've said this many times before. And what it comes down to is our energetic set points and our energetic frequency. So we are always matching the frequency of that which we are attracting. So let's say you have somebody that's resonating at the frequency of unworthiness, of feeling like they are not enough in any area of their life. They are then energetically putting out that call, that signal to attract the experiences that are going to affirm the narrative back to them that is unworthiness. So maybe they will attract a relationship where the partner doesn't respect them fully. Maybe they will attract a job that, you know, exploits them or takes advantage of of their abilities. You know, this can even manifest in the form of of people-pleasing. Something that I still struggle with to this day is people-pleasing. And I think that a lot of that comes from um, a deep-rooted sense of trying to prove yourself you know, for whatever, for whatever reason. And it's basically, it's the code. It is literally the code to your entire reality. So the way that we want to take our power back is to figure out how to hack this, right? How to, to restructure it and to reprogram. And something really interesting that I was thinking about too, is if any of you listening or watching are familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza, he dives into this a lot, especially with stress, And something that you may not even be aware of is that we can literally become addicted to stress. And I want you to think about this. Think about if you know somebody in your life that is constantly just a total Debbie Downer. They're harping on anything negative that happens. They say, oh, isn't this so horrible? The state of the world is terrible. There's no hope, this, that, whatever. And it seems like this person just has a dark cloud following them. And the thing is, it's not a coincidence, it's no accident that this person that is constantly living in this state of stress, constantly complaining, festering, focusing on the things that aren't working out, look at where they're putting their energy. Energy flows where attention goes. So this person is putting so much energy into the fact that things suck, you know, life is stressful, this, that, whatever, things aren't going to work out, that maybe they don't measure up somehow. And all of a sudden, this becomes their baseline. This becomes their natural set point frequency. Because for so many years, they've been in this place of scarcity, of focusing on negativity, of focusing on how things aren't going to work out, that the stress addiction, more or less, almost becomes a method of self-preservation. Because that is what the body is used to. That is what the body has unfortunately created its natural state to be in, is existing in this state of stress. And again, if you're interested, Joe Dispenza dives into this a lot in his book, um, Becoming Supernatural. But essentially, you literally become addicted to stress. The hormones in your body are so accustomed to being in that high level of cortisol and that high level of reaction mode that when you're not there, your body and your subconscious mind are going to search for anything they can grab onto or hold onto that's going to bring that experience back to you. 
And this is so eye-opening. This is crazy. When I first discovered this, I was totally blown away because I know people in my life that literally do this. And I think for a while, you know, I also had done this as well, you know, just because I was so unaware of the power that we have within ourselves. So I hope that that kind of explains sort of, you know, what the subconscious mind is and how that is really running the show. So what I'm going to share with you now is some ways and some tips that I think that you can do to help you reprogram your subconscious, to take your power back and to really step into your power because I want you to know that at any point, whenever it is that you're listening to this, whenever it is you're watching whatever, you always have a choice in who you are. You always have a choice to rewrite your story and you can literally in any single second decide to step into a new identity and just be that thing. If you are aware of this now, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, I I think that I have been telling myself a narrative that's wrong for years. That's fine. Awareness is such a huge, powerful thing. So if you become aware of that, the first step is becoming aware of this. And it almost becomes this aha moment where you can then say, okay, something's got to change. Now I need to figure out what I'm going to do. So I'm going to share with you. I'm just going to grab a little sip of water. Apologies for anyone that hates mouth noises. I always say this. But I know some people are like really triggered by that. Anyway, so I am going to share with you some things that I have done that have helped me reprogram my subconscious and I think have totally changed the game. So the first thing that I would recommend is just doing some reflection. You know, think about your childhood. Think about the headspace you were in growing up in those formulative or formulative years of your life. What was the narrative that you were being told? What was the reality that you experienced? And was that something that you fed Um, you know, you think about the two wolves analogy even too, it's like, which wolf is going to win? It's the one you feed. So were you feeding, you know, the negative narrative, the negative trajectory, the fear, the doubt, the anxiety, the unworthiness, or were you feeding the good narrative? You know, were you feeding the, the love, the compassion, the joy, the happiness? And, you know, think about it. Think about what you tell yourself. What is the story that you are telling yourself? And write it down. What is it that you have been led to believe about yourself all these years? How, what, how have you been, you know, structuring your life? And this is huge. This is like so transformative. So, you know, you think about what have I been led to believe in my life about career? You know, did you did you come from a family where where they encouraged you to step outside and to maybe do something unconventional? Or were you raised in a light that you know, forced you to sort of fit into a mold that maybe didn't resonate with you. These are all things that really are on such a deep level, so impactful to the reality that it is that we have. So my advice would be to just kind of figure out about yourself. And let me just say too right now, this is stuff that I am still figuring out. You know, we are never fully done healing or finishing inner work, but it's just becoming aware, like I said, of these things that help so much. So the second thing that I would do is, you know, just go through every category. You know, what is the story that you're telling yourself about um, your health, you know, career, love in your life, your family, your friends, your ambitions, your dreams, all of it. You know, what is that story that you're telling yourself? And be honest with yourself, too. You know, there's no need to be afraid of that. I think it's really powerful to be honest with yourself. And once you can kind of like see that all laid out in front of you, you can begin to to really get a picture for what it is. And even though we're tapping into our unconscious mind, these things have been planted into our mind at one point or another. So it's important to to figure out what those are. Now, something else that I think will stem off of this a little bit, and I might even do a totally different episode on this in general, is just understanding what your diet is. And I don't just mean your food. I don't just mean any of that. What you are consuming. So what you consume on a daily basis also has a huge impact on it. So think about the kinds of movies and, sh- and shows that you're watching. Are they full of sadness, graphic, you know, horrible things or the music that you're listening to is the music that you're listening to always saying like life sucks you know all that um 
emo stuff, for lack of a better word. I mean, I still love emo music every now and then, but just think about the diet of of what you're consuming, the books you're reading, the people you're surrounding yourself with. Everything has an effect. You know, we are, we are like a sponge. We're like walking sponges. We're always absorbing what's going on around us. So you can think about that too. That's another really powerful way to reprogram your subconscious. So first thing, we, we figure out the story we've been telling ourselves. Think about what you're surrounding yourself with now. Moving into what you can actually do moving forward. Most powerful thing of all is literally rewriting your story. So if you want to just sit down with like a notepad, whatever, you know, start to start to list out some affirmations. Who is it that you want to be? What is the identity that you want to embody? And just write it as if it were in the present tense, as if you were there. So for example, you could say, I am... I am so healthy. I am in such an optimal state of health. I have loving relationships with my family and my friends. My career is blossoming. And just claim it as your own. Write that list of affirmations out. And every single morning or every single night, look them over, repeat them to yourself. They're so powerful. Affirmations have absolutely changed my life. I can tell you for a fact, I have literally manifested things within a span of weeks, days even using affirmations. So do not discredit the power that affirmations hold. So I'm trying to think of what else I would do. Definitely, you know, making those lists of affirmations is is huge. It is so transformative. And apart from that, another thing that really helps and something that I love doing is listening to subliminals or healing frequencies. So the cool thing about subliminals, and I think the reason why they're so powerful, as the name would suggest, is that we aren't consciously aware of the affirmations that are included within them. So we can't really detect them with our conscious mind, our conscious ear, but they are still in there at such a small level or at such a low level, rather, that we can't pick up on it, but our subconscious mind still understands that it's there. So when we are able to permeate the subconscious mind, Um, without letting our conscious mind be aware of it, those are some of the most powerful instances of all that we can make these changes happen and we can start to embody that. So listening to subliminals is a great way to do that. Meditating is also a really great way to to really tap into that deeper state. You know, our brain waves change as we enter that more relaxed meditative state. And a lot of people, doctors have suggested that when we are in that state, we are a lot more susceptible to making positive changes. So I definitely would recommend meditating as well and staying consistent with this. It's not something that's going to change overnight as same thing goes with manifesting. It's not like we're going to snap our fingers and instantly we're going to manifest, you know, a million dollars sitting here on the table. These are things that take time and the same goes with any healthy, sustainable change, right? So if somebody were trying to lose weight or gain muscle, Same thing goes. If you really want to have good results, you have to be consistent with it. You have to put the time in to to recreate those habits. And a lot of thinking and a lot of our thought patterns are habits, subconscious and conscious as well. So if we take the time, they say 21 days is like that sweet spot where we rewrite a habit. So if you do these things for 21 days, I can guarantee you that you will begin to to notice a change in the narrative that you're telling yourself, that you'll begin to step into your worth more, that you'll feel more empowered, and you'll really begin to embody the traits and the characteristics of who it is that you want to be. And because of that, you will attract the experiences, the people, the places, the circumstances, everything that you want to come into your life. So I certainly hope you enjoyed this episode, my friends. Please, I want to tell you, um, if you could drop me a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, it would mean the absolute world to me. I invest so much time into this podcast and it would not be possible without your support. So please go ahead. I will leave a link in the description for you to drop a review. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on your favorite listening platform. I'm uploading every week, so you'll always have something new to tune into. But I am sending you all so much love and peace and happiness and abundance and all things good. And trust that you are a powerful being. I want you to know that you are infinitely powerful. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Bye.